make yourself all nice and cosy in your bed and close your eyes. Take a deep breath in and then slowly and gently let the breath out. Again, deep breath in then slowly and gently let the breath out. One more time, deep breath in and then slowly and gently let the breath out. Now imagine yourself surrounded by a beautiful white light. A light so bright, so pure, a light of protection and peace. Breathe in this white light. Feel it as it enters your body completely, making you feel all warm and so very safe. Now imagine that you are in a beautiful, lush green forest. And this forest has the most amazing trees. Some of them are very, very tall. Some of them are quite small. And some of them look as if they are reaching out to touch the sun. And you are standing on a very windy path deep in the forest on a beautiful sunny day. The birds are chattering high above in the trees. Tiny animals are scurrying around you, but you don't see them because they move far too quickly. So you begin to walk. And after a little while, you see a cave up ahead of you. You almost didn't see it because of all the bushes around the entrance. As you walk towards it, you think it would be a great idea to explore it and find out if there is anything in there. You're not afraid. In fact, you find it very exciting. From outside the cave, it looks rather dark, but you're not afraid of that either because you can see a light shining at the back, all the way right at the back. It's a big cave. And this cave looks very inviting. So warm and cosy looking. But you wonder why? Why is there a light in there? So you go and you take a look at the light at the back of this very large room. And you see that it's actually a burning torch on the wall. And it's outside of a doorway into another room. Take the torch off the wall and enter the second room. And what you see is quite amazing. It actually looks like someone lives in this room. There's a small fire burning in the fireplace. There's a table with some fruit sitting in the middle of it in a lovely bowl. There is even a very large sofa full of colourful cushions Oh, and it looked so cosy. And you wonder who on earth lives in a cave in the middle of a forest. Just then, you hear movement coming from the first room and you wonder who it is. Coming through the doorway is a very large being with a great big grin on his face. And you think to yourself, oh no, I've walked into someone's home and maybe they're upset. Oh no. But the big friendly face just greets you and says, Hello, I see you've come for a visit. What you see before you is a great big friendly monster. And he doesn't look scary at all. In fact, he looks rather nice with his great 
big, lovely smile. He is very big and looks very squishy too. He is a strange yellowy green colour with great big ears that flap a little. Kind of like tiny wings. And he has enormous kind blue eyes. And a thing sticking out of the top of his head. You're not really sure what that is, so it's just a thing, really. He asks you if you would like to take a seat and stay for a nice drink of lemonade. Yes, please, you say. The big friendly monster tells you his name is Edward. And he lives here all by himself. He tells you he is very happy that you've come to visit him. As he doesn't get many people come to see him. So he's very excited. As you look around the room you notice that there are lots of pictures in frames dotted everywhere. Pictures of a very happy family. Edward's family. He sees you looking at them and tells you that his family lives very far away, so he doesn't get to see them much nowadays. Edward hands you a big glass of lemonade and tells you about his life. Edward tells you that he is really very lonely. He tells you that because he looks so different from everyone else, and because he is so big, some people are afraid of him. Some people think he is ugly just because he looks different, and this makes him very sad. But you, you think he looks beautiful just the way he is, and would be very pleased if he was your friend. And you tell him this. Edward is so happy that you are being so kind to him. He asks you if you would like to be his best friend. And you say, yes, of course I would. I would be very proud to have a friend like you. So for a little while, you and Edward just sit and chat. And you tell each other about your lives. You tell him where you go to school and all about it. Because Edward has never been to school, so he doesn't know what it's like. So for a little while, just enjoy yourself with Edward. And just chat for just a little while and get to know each other.
Now, it's time for you to return to your own home. But before you go, Edward asks you if you would like to stay and maybe have a sleepover. And you say, oh yes, please. Then we can chat together for a lot longer now. Edward shows you his bedroom. It's the room next door and it has two great big beds in it with lovely soft quilts and pillows. And Edward says you can choose whichever bed you like. So you climb up on your bed and Edward climbs up on his and you begin to chat. There is so much for you both to talk about and you can talk and talk and talk until you both fall asleep. You are so happy to have found a new best friend and Edward is so kind and his smile can light up the sky. The two of you are feeling a little bit sleepy now but you both want to carry on chatting for a while and that's okay. That's great in fact. But whenever you are both ready, you only have to say goodnight to each other. Snuggle down and you will gently fall asleep. Now imagine yourself sitting in the shade under a very large tree. A beautiful lush green tree. And you can see the branches are reaching high up into the sky. Reaching for the light. Stretching themselves to feel the warmth of the sunshine just like you do. And you realise that your lovely tree is in a meadow filled with wild flowers. Flowers of every kind. And there are a few baby rabbits running around and playing too. They are chasing each other and just having fun. As you look around, you see that there is a very, very large sunflower further over in this beautiful meadow. And this sunflower has a spiral staircase running all around it. And you can see that it goes all the way up the stem. How strange! It's only then that you notice that you cannot see the top of the flower. It's disappearing into the clouds. And you wonder how this can be. How can a sunflower be that big? So you stand up and decide to find out. You decide to climb the spiral staircase to see just where it goes. And you are about to have a new adventure. You reach the bottom of the sunflower and start to climb. And climb. And climb. 
and climb. As you keep climbing, your legs are beginning to tire and you feel a little bit puffed with all this exercise. And just when you feel you are about to give up and go back down, you reach the clouds. You keep climbing, but now it feels like you are climbing through, well, misty fog. It feels kind of strange, but you keep going, determined to get to the top. Then suddenly, your head pops out of the clouds. And what you see is, well, what looks like a very strange land. All around you are green fields. And in the fields are the most enormous trees you have ever seen. These trees are the size of mountains. So you climb off the sunflower and start to walk in these green fields. But as you jump off the sunflower, you disappear down into the grass. And the grass is not like any grass you have ever seen before. It is huge. The grass to you is like walking through a forest. And you feel like you are the size of a tiny insect. The grass is so big and so tall. The stalks of the grass are very thick, almost as thick as the trees in your garden at home or in the park that you sometimes play in. So you begin to walk to see what you can find, to see if there is anyone else here in this strange land. It's kind of tough going though because the ground isn't smooth. It's all lumpy and bumpy, and you keep slipping. After a while, you see something shiny up ahead, and you wonder what it is. You can just see shiny glints of flashing in the sunlight from in between the grass. The closer you get to this shiny object, the bigger it gets. You stop alongside of it now and take a walk all around it and it's a long walk. And it's a strange object indeed. And you look and you're unsure. But then you notice that you see it's a spoon. A massive spoon. Oh my. This giant spoon is the size of a small ship. Goodness me, where are you? Where are you? You think about this for a minute. Who would have spoons the size of a small ship? Who would be able to pick it up? Who would be able to use it? Then suddenly, as if a light bulb flashed on in your head, you realise that the only people who could eat from a spoon this size are giants. Oh no, you are in the land of giants. So you start to walk away from the giant spoon and you feel the ground begin to move and you fall over. The ground is shaking but you don't know what's causing it. You wonder if there is an earthquake coming. Oh dear. You start to run and as you do you see movement out of the corner of your eye and you see a dark shape lumbering towards you. You look back as you run and you see that it's a giant bug and it's the size of a big dog. Oh no! You keep running and the bug is catching up with you. 
And just as you think it will catch you, you feel yourself being lifted up into the air. You go higher and higher, and you are moving very quickly through the air with something holding on to your back. Then, ever so gently, you are placed back down onto a large rock, safe from the big bug. You look up into the eyes of a giant child. Oh, and you are very scared. But the giant child smiles at you and tells you not to be afraid. And you know what? You aren't afraid of this giant child at all. The giant child is a young boy. He has a lovely crooked smile and freckles all over his giant face. He tells you he rescued you from the bug because he knew it would just want to eat you for its dinner. Oh, you thank him for his kindness. You really didn't want to be eaten by a giant bug. Ew. The giant boy tells you that he has read stories about humans and he loves reading human fairy tales. He asks you if you would like to see his bedroom and the toys he has. And because you know that this giant little boy is very nice and kind, you say yes. So once again he picks you up, so gently, and tells you he will keep you safe in his top pocket. He says this will keep you safe from other giants, as they will see you as a tasty, chewy snack. And we don't want that now, do we? So he asks you to tell him all about where you live and about how humans really live. He only knows the stories that his parents have told him, or what he's read in his school books, and he really doesn't believe all those fairy tales anyway. So for a few minutes, while you walk to his house, you talk to him, and you tell him how humans really do live. You tell him about your family, and you can tell him all about your school. You can even tell him what you like to do when you play out.
You arrive at the giant boy's house and look around from the top pocket of his shirt. From this height, you can see that what you thought were fields were actually the giant boy's back garden. And the trees the size of mountains? Well, they are just normal sized trees to the giant boy. The giant boy shouts hello to his mum and then sneaks you up into his bedroom. He takes you out of his top pocket and gently places you on the floor. And then he sits down next to you with a big thump. There is a knock on his bedroom door and the giant boy tells you to hide behind him as he doesn't want his mum to see you. So you quickly run behind his back and as the giant boy talks to his mum, you look around the room. Everything is so big, so huge. There is a pencil on the floor and it is the size of a street lamp to you. There is a toy car under his bed and it's the size of a real car in your world. The bedroom door closes again and the giant boy tells you, you can come back out now. His mum has brought him a sandwich and he offers some to you. Now, this sandwich is the size, well, of your mum and dad's bed. It's so big. The giant boy gives a little laugh and he breaks off a crumb for you. It's still the size of a football, but you say thank you because you are very hungry. While you are eating, he finally tells you his name. He tells you his name is Michael. And while you eat, Michael shows you his iPad. And again, because it is a giant size, it's the size of a cinema screen. Wow! So for a little while, you and Michael just have a little watch of his iPad and have a bit of fun and chat to each other about the things you do. And Michael tells you what his favourite TV show is. And now, sadly, it's time for you to go home. So Michael takes you back outside and back to where he finds the top of the sunflower peeking out of the misty clouds at the bottom of his garden. 
he places you gently back on the sunflower and asks you if you will come again to see him. And you say, yes, of course you will, because you have made a new friend and you don't want to lose his friendship now. Michael has been very kind to you and he looked after you so you wouldn't be hurt by anybody. This is what we should all do for our friends. Protect them and help them if they need it. You smile and you say goodbye to Michael and start climbing back down the spiral stairs wrapped around the beautiful sunflower. And you feel so happy. So now, take a deep breath in through your nose and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. Again, deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth. One last time, deep breath in and slowly and gently breathe out through your mouth and remember you can visit Michael anytime you want because Michael is your new best friend Now picture yourself in a beautiful meadow. The sun is shining and the birds are singing their beautiful song. Can you hear them? Can you hear the beautiful song of the birds? You look around and see the most amazing flowers all around you flowers of all different colours and scents. Can you smell the flowers? Can you see their vibrant colours? In the distance, you notice a strange looking object. So you walk a little closer to it. It's only very small but it looks, it looks like a flying saucer. It can't be, surely not. It is, wow, it's a flying saucer, wow. Can you see it? As you approach the saucer, you notice a little green head pop out. A little green head with a huge grin on its face. You start to laugh as you find it rather funny. You've never seen a face pull like that before. The alien is only little. He's only about 12 inches tall. And you're not scared at all. The alien has the kindest of faces. Is it a boy alien? Or is it a girl alien? Take a good look at this lovely little green alien. What does he or she look like? You crouch down and you are amazed that even though the alien speaks a different language than you, you can understand every word 
that is being said. What does the alien say to you? Can you hear? The alien asks you to come for a ride on the ship. And you laugh. You say you can't because you're too big to fit in this ship. They laugh too and then magically shrink you down to the same size as them. You can now get on board this little ship. Wow, and what a ship it is. Flashing lights, buzzing noises are everywhere. Look around you. What does it look like? What can you see? You feel shaking underneath your feet. The ship starts to move a little bit. Then all of a sudden, the ship starts to take off. Whoosh! You sit in the cockpit with the little green alien. You look outside the window at the earth below you, getting smaller and smaller. What can you see outside the window? You are flying higher and higher. And this flying saucer is so fast. Enjoy this ride with the little green alien for a short while. And you can have a nice chat with the alien and find out more about alien life. Do they have names? Where does this little alien come from? Maybe the alien has a special mission for you. Maybe they have a gift for you. So enjoy your ride with the lovely little green alien.
the flying saucer now lands back in the beautiful meadow. What a journey! You love the little green alien. The little green alien asks, can you do something before they leave? Something very special for the benefit of you, your family, your friends, and all of mankind. The little alien wants you to shine your light to send happiness, love, and healing to planet Earth. And you can do this by imagining a bright white light coming from your heart. See the white light as it grows bigger and bigger as it comes from your heart. So big that it covers your whole body like a force field of light. Now fill this light with thoughts of love, peace and healing and send it to anyone who you think may need it. It can be your family, your friends, a beloved pet, or maybe you can send it out to the whole wide world. Just shine that light brightly and send it out. You can send this white light, this healing light, you can send it out whenever you like, knowing that you are doing a service for the little green alien and for all life on this beautiful, beautiful planet. When you turn around, you notice that the alien has gone back home, but you also notice that they have left a little note for you. Read it. What does it say? It's now time to come home. So take a deep breath in and slowly breathe out through your mouth. And take another deep breath in 
and slowly breathe out through your mouth. One last time, deep breath in and slowly breathe out through your mouth. Now imagine that you are lying on your own comfy bed, all snuggled up nice and warm. And you notice something lying on the floor that you've never seen before. It's a book. Yes, it is. It's a book. And it has a picture of the kindest alien you have ever seen on the front cover. Oh, and she looks so friendly. You close your eyes and you wish with all of your heart that you could meet her. If only you could meet her. And you smile to yourself. I wish that could come true. And then you open your eyes. And there she is, right in front of you, smiling and waving. Well, you are absolutely flabbergasted. And you can't believe what you are seeing is real. She is smiling and waving at you. In fact, she's giving you a great big grin. She is very friendly. And she has the kindest eyes too. The little alien very shyly says hello to you. And you say hello back. You look at her and you see that she is very different to you. She is kind of a funny green colour with the biggest blue eyes you've ever seen. She is wearing a very sticky out pink skirt and a very big pink cowboy hat. She even has on pink cowboy boots. She tells you that pink is her favourite colour. And she tells you her name is Zinka. You think this is a very odd name, but you don't say anything because you don't want to hurt her feelings. You invite her to have a seat on your bed and the two of you have a great chat. You chat about where she comes from and she tells you about all of the places she's been to. She tells you what planet she comes from and how she got here. So for a few moments, just sit and have a chat with Zinka. Tell her about your life and your family. You can even introduce her to your family if you want to. So just have a little chat with Zinka. After your little chat with Zinka, she tells you she has a special power. Now this power 
makes her able to take you where she lives. Now wouldn't that be cool? Zinka tells you you can even have a sleepover on her planet if you want to. And because time doesn't exist the same where she lives, you can still get back to your home because no time will have passed by at all. In fact, no one would even know that you had gone. So of course, you say yes. How amazing is that? So Zynga tells you to close your eyes. Then open them again. And you do. And in front of you, you see a swirling and misty portal. See the misty swirls going round and around. Zinka takes your hand and tells you that she will count to three and then the two of you will just jump in. Are you ready? One, two, three, and jump! As you jump into the swirling mist, it feels like you are on a slide going round and around and around. And the slide is like a beautiful rainbow changing colours so fast that you can't keep up with all of them. All of a sudden, you pop out of the mist and land with a little bump on very soft grass. Well, it looks like grass, but you're not really sure what it is. But it is green, though. Zinka's lovely planet looks amazingly beautiful. So much more colourful than Earth is. There are all kinds of strange creatures walking around. Some of them have a dozen eyes. Ooh, how different they look from you. But they all say hello to you with very big grins on their faces. You think this planet should be called the Happy Planet because everyone is so happy and friendly here. Some of them are even multicolored, whilst others like characters you've seen in the movies. Very strange looking, but very kind. Everyone goes out of their way to make you feel special. How lovely. So for a little while, go with Zinka and explore her amazing planet. Maybe you could go to visit the local park and the shops. See what they like to eat here on this planet. Visit the places they live. See if they are like your houses. Maybe Zinka goes to school just like you. You could go to the alien museum. See what they have in their museums. Or you could go to the stadium and watch the alien Olympics. You decide.
you're feeling sleepy after such a wonderful but tiring day. Zinka takes you back to her bedroom for your sleepover. She shows you around her amazing bedroom and all of her toys. She even has human action figures. How weird is that? You see that there are two hammocks in her bedroom. One for her and one for you. You get on your hammock and you feel so comfy, so relaxed and so calm after your wonderful day with Zinka. So you settle down and the hammock begins to sway from side to side and it feels so peaceful and the hammock is so wonderfully comfortable. Zinka whispers goodnight to you and she hopes you have a wonderful sleep. You close your eyes as the hammock gently sways from side to side, side to side. And when you wake up in the morning, you'll be back in your own bed again, knowing that you can come back here to see Zinka, the friendly alien, whenever you like. So take a deep breath in and then slowly breathe out. You feel so happy, so relaxed as you take another deep breath in and then slowly let it out. Oh, and you feel so sleepy now. But you take another deep breath in and then slowly let it out. And even though your eyes are closed, they feel ever so tired. And you're breathing softly and gently now. And each time you breathe in, you take in all good thoughts and positive feelings. And you begin to drift in and out of sleep as you sink deeper and deeper into the lovely hammock. And you smile peacefully to yourself, feeling so happy so safe and so very very loved night night <laughs>